I'm so excited to share with you six really important announcements from Microsoft about what they call Copilot Release Wave 2 Spring Updates. All six matter and all six are very exciting for what they mean for you and your organization. So let's dig in. Announcement number one of these six is this thing called Copilot Search. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a second, can't we already do Copilot Search? Isn't that what Copilot does? Yes, when you use Copilot, it's searching. And so many people's first use case for Copilot is to ask it to find information for them. The thing is, is while that works, it's often difficult for Copilot to understand your context and the outcome you're trying to drive. So instead of that, having a dedicated search experience actually offsets so that many people will use this experience instead of Copilot to do searches. Why is that helpful? Well, in the Copilot search experience, you'll see things like the search results laid out as normal. You'll see Copilot summarize the search results for you. You'll also see, and very importantly, the data that Copilot is accessing and showing you. So on the right-hand side, there's this wonderful, rich breakdown of you know, the resources that you have access to that relate to the search result. So if there's content in Confluence, or if there's content in file shares, if there's content in other places that you have access to that have been connected to Microsoft Search and by proxy connected to this thing called the Graph Connector, which is connected to Copilot, all of a sudden, all of that will light up in one place. Now we have traditional search experiences people can go use, but now we have a Copilot enriched designed experience and that saves time. It doesn't just save time because now people will do less using Copilot in really hard ways. Here's this chat prompt, do everything for me. Instead, people will go to these specialized experiences like Copilot Search to get better results. But if they wanna take an action, like if you click on one of those details for one of the results, we can see things like a summary of that content. We can see things like related resources and more. So it saves time because it's not just the first level of experience when you do a search and you want some results, it's what do you do with those results that take step two or three. And having an interface where we can build more of that in means less prompting and more accessibility for many users. So I'm really excited about Copilot Search and I don't think you should ignore it. And that's part of the new Microsoft 365 Copilot app experience. Number two, another part of the Microsoft 365 Copilot app experience is Copilot Create. Now Copilot Create is also very exciting. I'm really excited about it because many of us are using for O oh, to create images today. These images are infographics, they're posters, they're richer than traditional images. And these images can be grounded based on organizational data in a safe and responsible way when we have that capability within Copilot. And that's coming very soon. And as that capability comes out, not only do we have the ability to do things like create images, posters, and things like that, but we can also help people understand other ways they can create content. A lot of people don't understand that one of the value propositions of AI is that it allows us to create anything to anything. So creating a video from a PowerPoint presentation is a powerful opportunity. Creating a, taking a Word document or something like that and making an audio version of it, very powerful, right? Taking a, a memo and making an infographic of it, super helpful, right? These are things that you'll be able to do using the latest capabilities of these frontier models with 4.0 image architecture stuff, as well as add in you know, responsible layers of security and privacy and things like that that are built in to Copilot so that I can use my business data to build these things. Most importantly, for many organizations, allowing you to align automatically your brand, establishing brand templates, using those to, you know, use the cutting edge image generation models along with your brand, that's another wonderful capability set that's being provided here. So Copilot Search and Copilot Create are two of the announcements that are really impactful, but they're not the only two. There's actually a third one that I wanna talk about called Copilot Notebooks. Now Copilot Notebooks are this way in which we can organize chats and references. If you've ever used Notebook LM or you've used uh, ChatGPT projects or other tools like that, one of the things that's great about this is a lot of times we revisit chats. Now you can use Copilot Gallery and save a prompt and then reuse prompts. You can do things like that today, but it's much more powerful when you have the context, which in this case is the references. Think of the files, the documents, the notes, the websites, the meeting recordings, you know, all that context that you can actually use that in these reusable chats. That's the value of a Copilot notebook in the same way you would use notebook or other things in that way. 
The difference is because it's referencing that content, it's always up to date. So you have source material that's being updated and it gets updated in real time. That information then is provided inside of your next chat. So when I do a new chat, I really love automated chats like reminders, things like that. So all of a sudden when it references you know, a particular document that's a working document, it will constantly be providing new results and new outputs. Really powerful capabilities built into this. Now, one of the other big parts of this is that many people find it's easier to access information when it's converted to other formats. I mentioned that with Copilot Create. Well, one of the things a Copilot Notebook provides, similar to Notebook LM, is the ability for two hosts to walk through content in an audio overview. And that can be really helpful to take really complex or rich content references that you've put in there and make sense of it, make it more accessible, make it easier to consume and understand. It's great for learning, it's great for connecting the dots and also even reframing your own narratives and ways in which you communicate internally. So really excited about that. Now, one last comment on Copilot Notebooks is it's also powerful because of the other capabilities around it. We have Copilot Gallery, we have Copilot Pages capability, which is really rich. And when you think about it, Copilot Pages is a great way to take the output of these Copilot prompts and share it and work collaboratively with others. Well, when you combine that with the fact that we can reuse prompts and create you know, our own organizational model around those prompts and the resources and references that we're using, you can start to see how Copilot Notebooks fills a gap that we really needed and really makes Microsoft have, you know, from a landscape perspective, some of the absolute best capabilities in the marketplace for this stuff. So that's really exciting. So Copilot Search, Copilot Create, Copilot Notebooks. That's not all, there is more. The fourth thing we're gonna talk about is agents. Now, of course, there's a lot of other agent capabilities. If you haven't seen it, there's a new researcher agent from Microsoft, a new analyst agent from Microsoft, and these are really powerful tools that can allow you to do a lot that you wouldn't be able to do before. These are agents that are doing multiple patterns of behavior. They're not just responding to you in a simple or limited way. They're doing multiple steps, multiple actions on your behalf. And these are two of many agents that work like this. There's a project manager agent in Copilot. There's many other agents that work in this way and more coming. These first party agents are great, but finding them, discovering them and rolling them out can be tricky. In these particular examples, those two agents, the analyst agent and the researcher agent are in the Frontier program. So once they are available in your organization, whether you're part of the Frontier program or you get access when they become more generally available, when that happens, they'll be provided through this thing called the agent store. And the agent store is just a much better experience than we have today. One of the big challenges is we have these combined everything stores and it's very confusing to users. So having this specialized space that really helps people understand, hey, here's how you can create your own agents, make it more accessible or an easy path forward. Here's all the third parties, tools that we use in the organization. And these are the ones that you can use to help you. Maybe you really like, you know, using the Monday agent or something like that. So you can pull in these agents and because you can pin them and control a bit more of your interface, it makes it easier to go back to them. Yes, Microsoft will have an orchestrator that will help identify and kind of map you towards agents when you're doing certain prompts, but it's really powerful when we have more agency as end users. And I'm really excited about these new announcements on agent experiences, on you know the agent store and how users have more control over that. So that's announcement number four. So we've got Copilot Search, Copilot Create, Copilot Notebooks, and agents. There's also people skills. Now people skills is so important that we'll do a separate video on it. And so it's really imp important to understand what is it in general. All it basically is, is this multi-agent experience set that infers skills based on the documents, the meeting names, and other things that you create. So your enterprise value, your data, your content, is now going to automatically, with zero action needed from the end user, inform and add skills to people's profiles, people cards, you know, to be used inside of Copilot uh, searches, and of course, a new Copilot agent called the skills agent. Now, why is this really important? It's important because we still have levels of control, right? If I wanted to opt out or if I wanted to control it, we can do all sorts of different ways to set that up. But importantly, we can also confirm which skills are ours. We can add our own skills through normal mechanisms. If people are already filling out skills or you have all that data in Workday or something, there's different ways you can import it or have people you know, copy paste it, all sorts of ways you can manage this. So that's really great. But what's most surprising about this particular update is that it's really well-baked. This isn't like one of the first releases that we often see with other products. This is one that's further along. It's an effective agent and it's a really smart, 
intelligent architecture to maintain skills, not just to do it one time, but to ensure that there's a high over 80% accuracy of these are the skills that are applicable to these users. That means that as months and years pass and organizations continue to have people working on more and more complex stuff and the skill industry shifts, the 16,000 skills that are you know automatically added if you want to use them as a baseline from LinkedIn and stuff, that's great, but those are going to change in the next, rarely rapidly in the next few years. So having the ability to use all of that together is a big deal. So people skills is another announcement that's really important and has far reaching implications. I highly encourage you to watch another video that dives deeper into this. So we've got Copilot Search, Copilot Create, Copilot Notebooks, we've got Agent Store, and we have people skills. There's one more announcement that I wanna talk about and that is actually about agents too. You see, one of the challenges we have is with AI apps and agents, making sure we understand how they're being used and we have the right controls in place. So while this is more of an admin thing, it's actually really important for all of us. What we can do now is we can do things like mitigate risks around data classification, protection policies, access to sensitive information. We can do that across our agents, across these AI apps. We can do things like control costs. As you can imagine, if everyone is now using store and they're using many of these agents, some of them will have a cost. You know, the nice thing is analyst and researcher agents aren't going to have a cost if you're, if you're a Copilot customer today with the, you know, the $30 user license, you're going to have it, right? It's part of the, the suite. But when you have ones that are new or added costs, you know, not every third party is going to make it free. You might have to pay a premium for that. When you do that, those have costs. So you want to manage and monitor, you know, did these people start to use the agent? Are they using it effectively? Are they the right people? Should they not be using this agent? Should they not be using this data? So blocking agents for users and groups, being able to understand how data is flowing through them for access to sensitive data, protection policies, and more is a big deal. and It's going to help all of us. But that's not where it ends. The last part of this wonderful AI apps and agents experience on the control center, the Copilot control center, that's important is how we measure. So one of the big things there is understanding how are agents being used? What's the resolution rates? What's the satisfaction look like? How, how many sessions per topic are happening? All sorts of really rich insights that help us understand where agents are performing, where they're falling short, and how we can use them better. When you combine that with the announcements I mentioned already, but especially the people skills, we now have an understanding of the skills and ways in which people are using agents. We have an understanding of the people skills and together that allows us to get better ratios around agent to people, which is really magically important in 2025 and 2026, because if we don't get that ratio right, people are going to be overwhelmed, burnt out, or we're going to have a lot of other consequences like missed efficiency without enough agents and with too many, some of those issues that I was mentioning on overwhelming burnout, bad judgment, you know, people can't scale to a certain degree. So we have some other issues there. So big announcements, right? Copilot search, Copilot create, Copilot notebooks, agent store, people skills, AI apps and agents, and new experiences in the Copilot control center and system. So these are really important announcements. I, I hope you're as excited as I am about these to dig deeper. They all matter. And together, when you combine this with all the other announcements earlier this year, the announcements that are coming, yes, there's more. You're going to see some more stuff in the coming weeks. And then, of course, later this year, it really helps you understand just how rich and fast this space is moving. And I find it really exciting. And all these announcements, I think, are very positive. They're going to help people do more and achieve more. So again, really excited and would love to hear from you. Which announcement have you seen that you're most excited about? Did I miss any that you think are really important? And do you have any questions about some of these that we didn't answer? Again, we'll have a more dedicated video for sure on people skills, but it would be great to do more focused videos on some of these other things if you yourself are running into these issues. Awesome. And thanks everyone for now.